Hi guys, welcome back to the next video in our tutorial series on Service Fabric. In the last video, we looked at how to use reliable dictionaries to store data on our Service Fabric cluster. In this video, we'll be doing something similar, but instead of using reliable dictionaries, we'll be using reliable queues. And the queue operates on a first in, first out basis. So every time we try and pull an object from the queue, we'll be getting the object that has been on the queue the longest. And every time we add an object, or in this case, we'll be adding products to the queue. We will add them at the end and they will be removed last. So let's jump into some code and let's see how we can do this. So the first thing we want to do is we want to add some methods to our product catalog class that allow us to add and remove products from a queue. So we'll start this with a public async method and it will be task returning an async because all of our methods when we want to interact with reliable state should be asynchronous so we can await our calls to get or add async or various different methods on the reliable collections. So we'll call this one get from queue and we won't need to pass it any parameters as we'll simply just get the latest object on the queue. So again, we want to get a reference to our state manager by calling this dot state manager. And then we want to get or create our product queue. So we'll say bar product queue equals await state manager dot get or add async, the same as before for the reliable dictionary. But instead of saying I reliable dictionary, we'll say I reliable queue. And the reliable queue will be storing products. And we'll have to give it a name as well. So when we're retrieving or creating the queue, we can either retrieve the one that's already created or create a new one if there's not already a queue stored on our cluster with this string ID. So we'll simply just call it product queue. And then when we're accessing our queue, again, we need to wrap this in a transaction. So we need to first create the transaction and we'll do this in a using statement. So we'll say bar tx equals state manager dot create transaction. That will create a transaction for us and store it in the TX variable. And then we want to get the product from the queue. So we'll simply say var product is equal to await product queue. And then we'll use try DQ async. And this should get us the latest product on the queue. And of course, we have to pass in our transaction. And this will return a type of conditional value again. So we can simply return the value. And this is not incredibly safe here because there's no real type check. And we're just assuming that this product will definitely exist in the queue. In a production application, you'd probably want to check the has value attribute on this and only return it if it has a value and return some error or something else if it wasn't the value. We forgot to say that we will be returning a product from this method because we're getting the product from the queue. And uh, then if there's nothing in the queue, we can simply throw an exception. Again, I would not use this in production, but it just gives us an example of how we can create a queue and access a queue using a transaction to pull stuff off the queue. So that's our get from queue method created. The next method we want to create is something that allows us to add products to the same queue. So again, it will be public async and task returning, and we'll simply call this method add to queue. And again, we just want to get the queue by using our state manager and then calling get or add async. So if the queue doesn't exist, it will be created. And if it already exists, we'll return the existing queue. And we want to wrap our interaction with the queue in a using statement, which has a transaction created from the state manager. But instead of calling try to queue async here, we will simply call nq async and we'll have to pass in both the transaction and the product. And because we're calling this from the API, we'll pass the product in as a parameter to the method on the service. The product will go into the product queue, nqa sync, which takes the transaction and the product. And there's just a naming con conflict here because I've said product here. This actually just returns a task, so we don't need to have any kind of variable there delete that because we're not returning anything from this method. 
just misspelt this here, so that's causing that exception. And this method now should run as expected. So we get the state manager, we get the product queue, and we simply enqueue the new product we've added onto the queue by passing in the transaction and the product itself. So as usual, we have to add both of these methods signatures to our iStateful interface, or else we won't be able to call them from other services. So we're exposing them to other services by doing this. So we'll simply copy the method signature into our stateful interface for this one. Apologies, go to definition. And the same for our other method, add to queue. We'll copy the method signature into our interface. And these are already implemented, so this interface is fine. We can now call these methods from our API service. So we'll add two new calls to our API service to support the use of these methods. So let's go into our API service and add some API methods on our controller so we can call get from queue and add to queue through Postman. And we can set some breakpoints to see what's happening in our service. So here's our API here. And we have the add product endpoint. So let's just copy this and change it to support our queue. So instead of calling it add product, we'll say add to queue and we'll change the method name to be similar. We still want to pass in the product itself, which we can get from the body. But in this example, we're also going to pass in the partition ID explicitly. So we'll say from query, so we can pass in as a query parameter and the int partition ID. So that means we can delete this. And then instead of calling stateful proxy add product, we need to have a comma here instead of a semicolon. Apologies. And instead of calling add product, we'll call add to queue. And again, we'll pass the product in. So that should allow us to add a product to our queue. Let me just make that all lowercase. And we'll do the same for get product. So we'll get a product from the queue. We'll copy this. We'll change the signature slightly. We'll call it get from queue. Get from queue. We don't need to pass the product ID here because we're simply going to get the latest product from the queue for a particular partition. But what we would do want to pass is we want to pass the partition ID again so we can explicitly state what partition we want to get the product from. So again, we don't need this partition ID equals product ID modulus three. And we can create our service proxy and simply want to update what method we're calling on our service. So we want to call it get from queue. And we don't need to pass in the partition ID or any product ID because we're simply getting the latest product. And then we can just return that from the controller. So let's go back into Postman, add the calls for both of these endpoints, add a couple of breakpoints in them, and let's follow through and see what happens when we call them a couple of times. Before we start to call the API, one small thing we forgot to add to our code is when we're adding to the queue, we need to commit our transaction. So we need to call await tx.commit async, and that will actually add our product to the queue. If we forgot to do that, the transaction wouldn't be committed and the product wouldn't be added. And in our get from queue, we should also add an await tx.commit async, because we want to completely remove this product from the queue. If we don't add tx.commit async, the product will remain on the queue, no matter how many times we try to dequeue it. So our service has now started, and we've added two calls to Postman to get and post a product to our queue. So our get call is on the same port as before, slash communication slash get from queue. And then we simply pass the partition ID as a query parameter. And our post is very similar to before as well. Same port slash communication slash add to queue. And again, passing the partition ID as a query parameter. The headers in our post, we sent the content type to application JSON. And in the body, we sent a raw body with just the JSON object of the product we want to add to our queue. So let's send this and see what breakpoints we hit along the way. Our service, we hit our API endpoint and we proxy to the add to queue method in our product catalog service. We hit that and we should add this product or enqueue this product to our reliable queue. 
and let's see if we can retrieve that. So let's use the get from queue HTTP post method. Let's send that for partition ID one, the same partition as before, and we should get our product. And let's see here. Yes, we do have our product BMW one ID one and type car. So it should be returned to the client here and we can see that we do have it. If we make this call again, the product should no longer exist on the queue because we've already dequeued it. So we shouldn't get a valid response here. We should be trying to get an object basically from an empty queue. So our product here, and as expected, it has value false and there is no product there. So we can't return anything to the client. We get a 204, no content. So let's add a couple of other products. In this case, we'll add to partition ID2. We'll add ID2 and we'll call it BMW2 and type car again. We'll send that. We'll skip over our breakpoints for now. Should just add it to the queue. And then we'll add a second car to our partition two of our product catalog service, BMW3. Keep it simple. So we send that and again, it should be NQ to our queue. So let's see if we can retrieve these cars. So if we try to receive them from partition one, we should get nothing back because they are actually stored on partition two of our service. And these reliable queues and reliable dictionaries are isolated from each other across partitions. So the data that's stored for one partition is not stored in the others. So we can see here, we're trying to get this product and it doesn't have a value because we're going to partition two. And the same would be true for partition three. But if we change the partition ID to two, we should get the object back. And when we hover over product here, we should see that we should have the last product. So BMW two, sorry, not the last product, the product we added furthest time away. And that will be returned. If we call this again, we will get BMW three. So let's try that. Call it one more time. We should, there should be one product remaining on the queue now, and it should be BMW3. And we are calling the right partition, partition ID2. And as we expect, we should have a value, and it is indeed the BMW3 car. And again, we return that to the client. So at present, we're currently running on a single node cluster locally. So we can see we have our three services. Our product catalog service has its three partitions. If we were running on a five node cluster, we'd have a primary and other nodes would have secondary instances on them, depending on our replication factor. And if we deleted or turned off node zero or node one, whatever the primary was running on, we would still be able to reliably access the data in our reliable dictionaries and reliable queues because that is replicated across our cluster. So if we had a target reliability factor of three, it would be copied to three nodes. If one of them fails, even if it's the primary, the other nodes will take over as the primary and a new secondary will start up. So as long as our whole cluster doesn't get deleted or our whole cluster doesn't go down completely, we should be able to retrieve our data always. It should be very highly available. So the combination of the partitioning gives us a high level of scalability. And then the reliable state and the fact that data is copied to multiple instances of a service, the primary and the secondaries, means that we can access the data reliably. So I hope you enjoyed watching this video on Service Fabric Reliable Queues. In the upcoming videos, we'll look at some more different aspects of Service Fabric and Service Fabric configuration that we haven't covered so far. If you enjoyed the video, please like it and subscribe to the channel for more Service Fabric content coming up.